Welcome viewers to the second segment of the sixth lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of Algebraic Topology 2. In the previous segment, I stated the eilenberg steenrod axioms, all the eight axioms um, for a homology theory. Um, uh, and towards the end of the previous segment, I, I motivated the definition of triangulation. Now I'm going to give you the definition, the, the precise definition of triangulation. Uh, triangulation. Let A be a subspace of a given topological space X. A triangulation of the pair x comma a is a simply shell complex k a subcomplex k zero of k. and a homeomorphism H from the pair a mod K comma mod K zero right so mod K means the underlying space of the simplicial complex K and mod K zero denotes the the underlying space of the subcomplex k0 of the complex k and uh, h takes this pair to the pair x comma a and when such a homeomorphism exists between uh, two pairs of topological spaces this pair and this pair we say that the, the pair x comma a is triangulable and you know the the triangulation is nothing but but this triple a simply shell complex k a sub complex k zero of the complex k and this homeomorphism okay if such a triangulation exists We say x comma a this pair is a triangulable pair. Triangulable pair. If a is empty in this process, we say simply. that the topological space X is a triangulable space is a triangulable space okay um, now let X comma a be a triangulable pair triangulable um, pair we defined the simplicial homology simplicial homology HP of X comma a the simplicial homology of this triangulable pair 
of the pair x comma a in the following way. Okay. So now I'll show you the construction. So let me erase everything. Consider the collection of all triangulations. So we know that when a pair is triangulable, a homeomorphism that I discussed earlier exists. Okay, but there can be many triangulations of a given triangulable pair, right? So we take the collection of all those triangulations of the pair x comma a. They are of the form, I mean the homeomorphisms, the underlying homeomorphisms are as follows. H alpha from the pair mod k alpha comma mod c alpha to the pair x comma a. We denote this uh, homeomorphism by 1 where c alpha is a subcomplex of k alpha. We can't call the collection of all triangulations of a pair a set in the same spirit as the as the collection of all the sets is not a set. Okay, so uh, that is the reason we call it a class or a proper class instead of calling it a set. Uh, a set. So um, we avoid such problems, such technical problems uh, arising in, in, in the context of set theory, such problems by assuming that each k alpha, each of these complexes lies in some fixed generalized Euclidean space. generalized Euclidean space E superscript J for a given J. Okay, well we can do this by taking, by considering J to have the cardinality of the topological space of X itself. Right, we can do this by taking the index family J to have um, the cardinality to have the cardinality. Um, of x itself. Okay. Then we can have uh, a copy of k alpha, you know, uh, uh, printed uh, in 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 this uh, generalized Euclidean space. Okay. Now for a for a fixed P so we, we fix this this P and consider the groups 
consider the groups HP um, of K alpha comma C alpha is the relative homology group of K alpha mod C alpha okay we, we we already know such we are familiar with with this group of relative P chains right which form the the homology classes relative homology classes we we form we then form the the product space hp of k alpha comma c alpha cartesian product uh, the singleton alpha okay it's evident that evident that hp of k alpha comma c alpha cross alpha and hp of k beta comma c beta cross the singleton beta are disjoint whenever alpha whenever alpha and right whenever alpha and beta are different are distinct okay so um th th these groups right uh may have many 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 elements in common but um as as to different fibers right they are different elements as 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 lying in different fibers they are different elements something like this you know uh, one comma two is is unequal to one comma three okay so these second component being different and even though these ones are the same uh, these pairs are different okay so that was actually the goal for uh, construct for constructing uh, these these objects okay so uh, let me draw a picture that will give you an uh, intuitive view to what what we are trying to achieve this is the index family J and here there are two indices alpha and beta which are distinct from each other then this is the group attached to alpha um, um, which is uh, hp uh, k alpha comma c alpha and this is the group attached to beta which we uh, denote by hp uh, uh, K beta, C beta, so there are two elements here. They are always different, right? Um, let us denote one one element here as uh, A X P comma alpha, and another element here Y P comma beta. Um, now we introduce introduce an equivalence relation in the uh, disjoint union so we take the disjoint union of all these fibers here 
attached to each uh, element in the index family, right? Uh, so this is the a disjoint union, H P of K alpha comma C alpha cross the singleton alpha. We take the disjoint union of all these fibers, and we define an equivalence relation in this uh, in this bundle-like structure. One defines X P comma alpha in HP of K alpha comma C alpha cross alpha. So I'm picking up an element from this fiber and another element from the other fiber in the picture, which is YP comma beta. It's, it's in HP of K beta comma C beta um, cross beta. And we declare that these two guys in these two, uh, you know, uh, groups or fibers, so to say, uh, uh, to be equivalent equivalent to each other um, that is X, the pair XP comma alpha is equivalent to YP comma beta if and only if um, H beta inverse composed with H alpha star at P um, evaluated at XP is equal to YP. Okay. Uh, uh, remember, uh, so let me uh, write that H alpha is a map from this pair K alpha comma C alpha to the the triangulable pair X comma A. Okay. So, um, um, so uh, when I compose these two maps, um, it is uh, going to be something like this, H beta inverse, which I can always do because it's a homeomorphism. H beta inverse composed with H alpha is a map. Um, from this pair K alpha C alpha to the pair K beta C beta. Okay. So the induced homomorphism in dimension P is going to be a map from the, the relative homology group in dimension P of K alpha mod C alpha to the, the pth homology, relative homology uh, group of K beta mod C beta. So, um, and we know that um, uh, this guy is here, right? Is here. So, H beta inverse composed with H alpha star at P acting on XP. This pair, it, 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 so this pair is in this fiber which is in, so uh, like I'm writing, I, I have written down it here, but XP is here, right? In HP of K alpha comma C alpha and YP is here. YP is in HP of K beta comma C beta, 
right? So uh, this guy, um, this induced homomorphism at the level in dimension p, acting on x p, should be here, right? And as long as this is equal to that y p here we'll say that these two points are equivalent. These two group elements in these two fibers are equivalent. All right, so this is the geometric uh, picture of what we are trying to achieve. Okay. And uh, so, all right, so, so, so this is the story in terms of uh, two, uh, two fibers, okay? So similarly, we can have the other fibers here, okay? And uh, we can form an equivalence class like this, where an equivalence class will pick up only one element from each fiber like this, okay? So there will be no two elements in the same equivalence class uh, uh, from the same fiber, okay? See that a single element we are picking up from each uh, fiber, okay? And a cross section uh, is an equivalence class and we let HP of X comma A denote the set of all such equivalence classes. Okay, so we have defined an equivalence class here, okay, by means of which we can pick up one and only one element from each of these fibers and uh, together they will be called an equivalence class which is an element here so like i said before each equivalence class equivalence class contains exactly one element from each group HP K alpha comma C alpha cross alpha that is each fiber um, in the figure above in the here in the figure above so this guy is this cross section is an equivalence class in HP of x comma a so um, when i'm saying that uh, each equivalence class contains one element uh, from these fibers from each of these fibers one element from each of these fibers that is the map HP of K alpha comma C alpha cross alpha is one fiber. So one fiber goes to one element. So this is a bijective map. 
right? One element here goes to one equivalence class there. So let me write it here. So this map here that carries each element each element in this uh, fiber each element in hp of k alpha comma c alpha cross alpha to to its equivalence class equivalence class in HP of X comma a so so these map that carries each element here to the equivalence class um, uh, contained here is bijective So now we we make this this guy HP of X comma A, which is the um, collection of equivalence classes uh, defined uh, you know uh, defined by the equivalence relation earlier uh, as introduced earlier. Um, so uh, an element here is an equivalence class and it, it 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 has a group structure so we make this a group requiring um, this map here an isomorphism and isomorphism that is a bijective group homomorphism so the group operation operation in this object hp of x comma what a reads um, the class of XP. Okay, so there are many elements in this class, but if so, but it contains one element from each of these fibers. Okay, so if there are many elements, meaning that there there are many elements from uh, different fibers okay but from one fiber there is only one element so uh, we are free to choose any any of those elements from any of those fibers as a representative that that is that intersects those uh, fibers okay so now um, if this is an equivalence class and uh, this is an equivalence class then uh, we define their addition here in this group to be um, the addition of uh, mm. The addition of them. So XP is one equivalence class, right? Something like this. Sorry, yeah. And there is another equivalence class here. Okay. 
right? So um, when I'm picking up uh, a representative here from this fiber, and I, I, I grip, so in order to have a, a well-defined addition here, I have to pick up a, a representative from the same fiber so that I can do this, okay? This is what we are doing. So, so as long as we take XP and ZP, from the um, uh, from the same fiber, we can always do that, right? Uh, and then we add them up in the same fiber. So this is well defined as long as X, P, and Z, P are on the same group. Right? Th this is possible if they are on the same group. Plus is possible if they are on the same fiber okay all right because you know uh, i can choose any 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 representative from here right i can choose a representative from here or i can choose it as a representative of this equivalence class anyone so we choose the representatives in such a way uh, so for this equivalence class if i choose this representative then I got to choose this representative for this equivalence class. So can I, so that I can add them up using this definition. Okay. Um, okay. Let me erase it. Now, um, here, if XP and yp uh, belong to the uh, if uh, xp and yp are two different representatives of the same class right we we write them to be the same the equivalence classes to be the same and then uh, this uh, pair xp comma alpha is equivalent to yp comma beta for distinct alpha beta okay good uh, now i want you to check that um, it is indeed a well-defined group operation it is indeed a well-defined group operation okay all right so um now let me raise everything i have given you the construction of uh, this object I had a triangulable pair x comma a and um, I have constructed the homology group the p homology group of that uh, triangulable pair it turns out that the elements in this p homology group are equivalence classes okay based on certain equivalence relation that we have all also defined now a continuous map um h um from the uh, triangulable pair x comma a to the triangulable pair y comma b induces a group homomorphism at the level of homology groups in the following way in homology 
as follows. Take any pair of triangulations Okay, so um, so I, I take a triangulation for this pair and I take another triangulation for this pair. Okay, so let us uh, denote them by H alpha and K beta respectively. So H alpha is a homeomorphism from this pair mod K alpha comma C alpha mod C alpha to the pair X comma A and K beta is another homeomorphism from the pair uh, mod L beta to uh, sorry comma uh, mod D, D beta to uh, the uh, triangulable pair Y comma B. Okay, so this gives a triangulation of the pair X comma A follows from the, de from the uh, def definition of triangulability of a pair and this gives uh, a triangulation of the pair y comma b okay now the map this map h induces a map H prime from the pair uh, mod K alpha comma mod C alpha to the pair mod L beta comma mod D beta pairs of simply shell complexes Here, I want you to uh, understand that this H prime, given in terms of this homeomorphism and this continuous map, um, as K beta inverse composed with H composed with H alpha. which in turn yields a group homomorphism homomorphism h prime star at p okay from HP of K alpha comma C alpha it's a relative P homology group of the simply shell complex K alpha mod C alpha to the the P relative homology group of the uh, complex L beta mod D beta okay So this in turn yields a homomorphism, a group homomorphism of simply shell homology groups. We already know about this simply shell homology groups. Simply shell relative homology, simply shell homology groups. Um, this homomorphism induces a well-defined this homomorphism this one homomorphism induces a well-defined group homomorphism group homomorphism when 
one passes to equivalence classes. Equivalence classes. Okay. Right. You know, by passing to equivalence classes, you now have this notion, right? HP of X comma A and HP of Y comma B. We constructed such um, homology groups earlier, right? By means of um, equivalence relations. Um, okay. And uh, and this is so. Uh, this is what. Okay, let me raise this. This is H star at P. This is this homomorphism is induced at the level of um, homology groups of triangulable pairs HP of X comma A to HP of Y comma B in the following way. Okay, so this map is given by, so we have to pick up an equivalence class from this uh, homology group. So we, we constructed this homology group earlier. It's, it's a collection of um, equivalence classes as we have seen before. So an element of this is something like this, xp comma alpha, right? And um, this is a class where xp belongs to um, uh, uh, belongs to this homology group it's is the the pth relative homology group of um, of the complex k alpha mod uh, c alpha and this is going to be mapped to uh, another equivalence class here, which is uh, H prime. Remember this map, the one that we found earlier. So uh, H prime star at P is going to act on XP. To spit out this element h prime star at p x p is in here right in x um, h p um, of sorry l beta comma d beta this is the p etymology group of the complex l beta mod uh, uh, p it relative homology group of the complex L beta mod D beta. Okay, so this guy is here, right? And uh, this is again a pair like this. This is this this is the first component of that pair, and the second component is beta. So this is how this uh, we are going to have this map. So an element here, an equivalence class here is getting mapped to, to an equivalence class here. Okay. And we, 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 we define this map with the use of this map. Okay. And good. So now uh, let me erase this. one needs to see how one gets a boundary homomorphism
a boundary homomorphism um, a del star x at p from hp of x comma a we know what it is right to hp minus 1 of a right so this is a triangulable pair and this is also a triangulable pair and this is the p a homology group of this triangulable pair and this is the p minus 1 homology group of the triangulable pair a comma empty space okay so how do we construct this boundary homomorphism knowing the triangulation of those triangulable pairs or in terms of the relative homology groups of the uh, of the simplicial complexes involved in this triangulations okay. because we have concepts of relative homology groups of the of the simplicial complexes involved in this um, triangulations okay so by means of those um, uh, those relative homology groups and uh, the the uh, boundary homomorphism um, at those settings how can we construct this boundary homomorphism here let's see how we do this so uh, the boundary homomorphism homomorphism um, del star x at p um, from hp of x comma a to hp minus 1 of a is obtained as follows So we write del star x at p to be equal to h alpha restricted to c alpha star at p minus 1 composed with del star k alpha composed with uh, sorry at p composed with h alpha inverse star at p where h alpha restricted to c alpha is the restriction of the map h alpha from the pair mod k alpha comma mod c alpha to the pair x comma a okay so uh, this guy is the restriction of this map to this subcomplex okay also the the homeomorphism morphism h alpha right is the homeomorphism giving yielding the triangulability of X, the pair x comma a which is a triangulable pair right h alpha is was defined to be the homeomorphism from mod 
k alpha comma mod c alpha to um, x comma a right and since it was a homeomorphism the inverse exists and which is also a continuous map and has its inverse h alpha inverse which is a map from the pair x comma a to the pair mod k alpha comma mod c alpha which induces the following group homomorphism group homomorphism h alpha minus one star at p from hp of x comma a to hp of um, k alpha comma c alpha this is the pth relative homology group of the complex k alpha mod c alpha Therefore, indeed, one can compose these three maps in, succe in succession to obtain the following map, this map. So, first of all, when this, this map, um, when this map acts here on HP of X comma A, it gives an um, element here, right? in hp of k alpha comma c alpha and when this guy sorry not that guy this guy del star k alpha at p acts on this hp k alpha c alpha it gives an element in HP minus 1 C alpha right this is the standard boundary uh, uh, homology boundary homomorphism that we constructed uh, while we were studying uh, the zigzag lemma right so this is the standard uh, homology boundary homomorphism and so it it acts on this and spits out an element here and this guy acts on that element here and gives out a, gives us an element here and then finally this guy acts on the element here and um gives us an element in hp minus 1 of a right because this is the restriction this is the restriction of this map so um uh, so we know that from here we know that h alpha um, restricted to c alpha star right at p minus 1 will take um, uh, since it's uh, it's a restriction to c alpha it will take uh, HP minus 1 C alpha to HP minus 1 of A okay all right so finally we see that we have uh, this guy 
delta star x at p which is defined as h alpha restricted to c alpha star at p minus 1 composed with del star k alpha at p composed with h alpha minus one, h alpha inverse uh, star at p and this guy acts on hp of x comma a and gives us an element in hp minus 1 of a so this is how we uh, construct this boundary homomorphism okay so we have all the constituents for a homology theory okay we does have all the constituents of a homology theory now we need to convince ourselves that the class of triangulable pairs forms an admissible class of spaces for a homology theory which is the axio axiomatic homology theory right so we need to convince ourselves first so it can be verified easily in the following way if x comma a is triangulable then so are x comma x x comma empty space a comma a and a comma empty space for example um, uh, the pair x comma a triangulable um, implies the existence of a uh, of a ho homeomorphism homeomorphism so let us denote that homeomorphism by H alpha, which is a map between uh, by continuous map between the pairs k alpha mod k alpha comma mod c alpha to the pair x comma a with k alpha being a simply shell complex and C alpha being a subcomplex. of K alpha okay and we know from the definition of a map between pairs of spaces um, and we know from the definition of this map definition of a map between pairs of spaces that this guy h alpha um from um uh, mod k alpha 
okay, which is the underlying space of the simply shell complex K alpha to uh, the topological space X is, is, is a homeomorphism is a homeomorphism with H alpha of uh, mod C alpha is equal to A. We know this. Okay, so let me raise this front matter. Um, one therefore has the following homeomorphisms. One therefore has the following homeomorphisms. L alpha, which is a map uh, from the pair K mod K alpha mod K alpha to X comma X, because we have a homeomorphism like this. So obviously we have this uh, uh, ma uh, this homeomorphism between these two pairs. And uh, there is this homeomorphism M alpha, which is from the pair mod K alpha, comma the empty space to X comma the empty space, and N alpha, which is uh, a homeomorphism from the pair mod C alpha, comma mod C alpha. Okay. Um, to uh, the pair a comma a and this map this homeomorphism p alpha which is uh, a homeomorphism from the pair mod c alpha comma the empty space to a comma the empty space okay these four homeomorphisms we can uh, we can have which shows that X comma X X comma uh, empty space A comma A and the pair A comma the empty space are also triangulable pairs triangulable pairs okay any one point space is a zero simplex and hence trivially triangulable. Finally, by means of the following lemma, I'm just uh, stating the lemma, not going to prove it, um, which we call lemma one uh, for the proof of which C uh, section 19 of our textbook. This lemma states that if if K is a complex, then mod K cross i 
okay, which is uh, the uh, the product of the topological space mod k, which is the underlying space of the complex k uh, across the uh, closed unit interval. Uh, this guy is the polytope is the polytope of a complex of a complex M such that so we know that a complex exists whose underlying space is going to be mod k cross i such that um, each set a sigma cross i so each set of the form sigma cross i is the polytope of a subcomplex of m polytope of a subcomplex of that complex m subcomplex of m and in particular sigma cross zero and sigma cross i are simplices of this complex m of m and this is true for each simplex sigma of this complex k for each simplex sigma of k okay good now one finds that using this lemma one finds that if x comma a is triangulable then so is this pair x cross i comma a cross i okay Okay, um, right, so how do you see that? Given the homeomorphism, um, um, Uh, so we know that x comma a is triangulable so we are given these homeomorphisms um, this homeomorphism at least there is a there is such a homeomorphism uh, from the pair mod k alpha comma mod c alpha um, to uh, the pair x comma a uh, one can find given this homeomorphism it's given since x comma a is triangulable one can find a homeomorphism homeomorphism t alpha um, from the pair mod k alpha cross i comma mod c alpha cross i right so uh, we know that uh, there are um, complexes whose polytopes are mod k alpha cross i and there, there is a complex whose polytope is mod c alpha cross i okay so uh, one can find a homeomorphism from here 
2 x cross i 2 a cross i Okay, so in order to see that one, all you need to see that um, if um, if H alpha from uh, so uh, the this is a homeomorphism meaning that there exists a uh, homeomorphism between these two topological spaces, right? So if uh, uh, this is a homeomorphism, homeomorphism with H alpha of mod C alpha is equal to A then T alpha is 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 also a homeomorphism from mod K alpha cross I to to um, x cross i with t alpha of mod c alpha cross i is equal to a cross i. This is what you need to check. Mm -hmm. Besides, given C alpha is a subcomplex of K alpha, complex of K alpha mod C alpha cross I is the polytope is the Polytope of a subcomplex of a complex whose polytope. is mod k alpha cross i okay as guaranteed by lemma one okay all right uh, so we are all good to prove the theorem that simplicial homology theory on the class of triangulable pairs satisfies the eilenberg steindrod ax axioms okay so that we are going to do in the next segment okay thank you for attending the second segment of the sixth lecture